If you're really high right now, make some noise. I mean, like high on a bridge. The Republican Party, you said, is the most dangerous organization in the world. Party, you said, is the most dangerous organization in world history. Can you explain? We got a right, we got the night. I got the battle, you got the light. We got the stars, we got it all. The Republican Party, fly, you said, is the most light, dangerous you got the moon, organization. Got the sky, in world we got the stars, history. we got it all. The Republican Party, you said, is the most dangerous organization in world history. Can you explain? I mean, has there ever been an organization in human history that is dedicated with such a commitment to the destruction of organized human life on Earth? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. The Republican Party, you said, is the most dangerous organization in the world. I mean, has there ever been an organization in human history that is dedicated with such a commitment to the destruction of organized human life on Earth? But the most powerful country in human history, the richest, most powerful, most influential, the, the leader of the free world, uh, has just decided not only not to support the efforts, but actively to undermine them. So there's the whole world on one side, literally, at least trying to do something or other. Uh, not enough, maybe, although some places are going pretty far, like Denmark or others. On the other side, in splendid isolation is the country led by the most dangerous organization in human history, which is saying, we're not part of this. In fact, we're going to try to undermine it. We're going to maximize the use of fossil fuels, could carry us past the tipping point. But we're not going to provide funding for, as committed in Paris to uh, developing countries that are uh, trying to do something about the climate problems, uh, uh, we're going to dismantle regulations uh, that retard the uh, impact, the devastating impact of the uh, production of carbon dioxide and, in fact, other dangerous uh, uh, gases, methane, others. Okay, so the conference kind of pretty much came to a halt, but the question, it continued, but the question was, can we salvage something from this record? And pretty amazingly, the countries of the world were looking for salvation uh, to a different country, China. Here we have a world looking 
for salvation to China of all places when the United States is the wrecking machine that's threatening destruction. In the, with all three uh, uh, branches of government in the hands of the most dangerous organization in human history. And I don't have to go through what's happened since, but uh, the... Uh, party, whatever you want to call it, has been doing this at every level. So uh, in North Carolina, a couple of years ago, where the legislature, mostly thanks to gerrymandering, is uh, in the hands of the Republicans, uh, there was a, a, a study, uh, uh, they called for a study on the uh, effect of sea level rise, on what sea level rise might be on the North Carolina coast. And there was a serious scientific study uh, which uh, predicted, um, not, I forget how many years, not a long time, about uh, roughly a meter rise in sea level, uh, which could be devastating to eastern North Carolina. And the legislature did react, namely by passing legislation to ban any actions or even discussion that might have to do with climate change. Uh, actually, the best comment of this, I uh, wish I could quote it verbatim, was by Stephen Colbert, who said, uh, if you have a serious problem, the way to deal with it is to legislate that it doesn't exist, problem solved. You know? uh, this, this is going on all over the country, and it's not just, uh, it's not simply uh, climate change, that's bad enough, but there's a, another huge specter that we're kind of uh, trying to survive under, and that's nuclear war. And it's a whole other story. Here, both the Obama administration and increasingly Trump are uh, radically increasing that danger. Uh, this, the threat of the, uh, of, of the new developments is captured uh, very effectively in the best simple monitor of the state of the world established at the beginning of the nuclear age by the bulletin of atomic scientists and i'm sure you all know about this but by the bulletin of atomic scientists and i'm sure you all know about this but by the bulletin of atomic scientists and i'm sure you all know about this but you all know about this but the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists regularly brings together a, a group of uh, scientists, uh, political analysts, others, very serious people, to try to give some kind of estimate of what the situation of the world is. The question is, how close are we to termination of the species? How close are we to termination of the species?
how close are we to termination of the species? And they have a clock, the doomsday clock. When it hits midnight, we're finished. Uh, end of the human species and much else. And the question every year, I don't know about this, but the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists regularly brings together a, a group of uh, scientists, uh, political analysts, others, very serious people to try to give some kind of estimate of what the situation of the world is. The question is, how close are we to termination of the species? And they have a clock, the doomsday clock. When it hits midnight, we're finished. Uh, end of the human species and much else. And the question every year is, how far is the minute hand from midnight? Well, in, at the beginning, in 1947, the be beginning of the nuclear age, it was placed at seven minutes to midnight. Uh, it's been moving up and back ever since. The closest it's come to midnight was 1953. Uh, 1953, uh, the United States and Russia uh, both exploded hydrogen bombs, which are extremely serious threat to survival. But two years ago, 2014, I think it was, the uh, uh, analysts uh, took into account for the first time something that had been ignored, uh, the fact that the uh, the fact that the uh, the fact that the nuclear age, uh, the beginning of the nuclear age, coincided with the beginning of a new geological epoch, uh, the so-called Anthropocene. There's been some debate about the epoch in which human activity is drastically affecting the general environment. Now, there's been debate about its inception, but the World Geological Organization has recently determined that it's about the same time as the beginning of the nuclear age. So we're in these two eras in which the uh, possibility of human survival is very much at stake, and with us, everything else too, of course, living, all well, living, most living things which are already under very severe threat. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, I think it was 2014, the bulletin began to take that into account and moved the minute hand up to three minutes to midnight, uh, where it remained last year. Uh, a couple of, about a week into Trump's term, uh, the clock was moved again to two and a half minutes to midnight. That's the closest it's been since 1953. Uh, and that means uh, extermination of the species is very much an uh, very much an open question. Uh, uh, uh. Advocating and working for uh, destruction of the human species, I agree. That's a very outrageous statement. Uh, so I therefore simply suggest that you take a look at the facts and uh, see if uh, it has any merit or if it just uh, should be bitterly condemned, that's up to you. In my view, the facts are pretty clear. Or if it just uh, should be bitterly condemned, that's up to you. In my view, the facts...